So we're here at House of VR, yes. which is a place that introduces folks to virtual and augmented reality. I want to talk about the importance of fun and games in uh, your company specifically, yeah. because you have this company that works with leading beauty brands like uh, L'Oreal and Sephora, but you actually started as an app that was just for fun and games. So can you, can you tell me about your origins of Mati Face and how you got where you are today? The origins went from fun and games to serious in a very short amount of time. So um, started about 10 years ago. And at the time, um, I was a professor at the University of Toronto working on lip tracking. So the idea was to um, track lips so you could make speech recognition systems better. And as a fun um, project, we decided to make this uh, website where you could change your lips with Angelina Jolie. So you could upload a photo and your lips or your eyes could be changed with a celebrity, just, just as a fun thing to show what our technology could do. And we also added this ability that you could essentially perfect your skin. So you could get rid of blemishes on your skin uh, before you saw the end result. The website became really popular, and one of the people that actually saw this site was the head of marketing at Allergan, the company behind Botox. And so they wanted to know if the, we could actually simulate Botox. And so we went from a fun um, project to a very serious undertaking to really study this medical product and, and see how we could replicate it on people's photos. Yeah, and so it's a huge shift for you individually because you went from, as you said, working on lip tracking for the U.S. defense industry out of the University of Toronto. Um, or maybe I have that wrong. You were, where were you when you were doing University that? University of Toronto, yeah. Okay, yeah, perfect. And then uh, you, all of a sudden you find yourself in the beauty industry. So a different, yes. little bit of a different crowd, right? <laughs> a whole different world. Um, the technology is, is the same. So what I've always known is you know, point tracking, um, computer vision, that, that is something I, I have lived with for a long time. But the beauty industry is different. And so it's taken 10 years to understand the ins and outs of the space. And, and, but um, we've learned. We, we've done a lot of experiments. We've had a lot of failures and some successes. And I guess in time, as long as you have more success than failures, you keep going forward. Yeah, and I want to ask you, what do you think is the importance of fun and games when creating real business use cases for augmented reality? Because, you know, people hear about augmented reality, they think about, like, Pokemon Go, or they think about dancing hot dogs today, which are really fun. Um, right. But I remember the first time I ever uh, paid a visit to the Body Face office, you had all these, I think it was Lego structures, <laughs> and I said, what's going on here? And you said, well, we take Friday afternoons to play Lego and create together. So it's something that's really, it seems, anyways, intrinsic to your culture at Mati Face, so I'm just wondering, what do you think is the importance of just having fun when developing a killer use case for AR? So I think fun and games are important, no matter what you do. Sometimes you need stress relief, and so fun and games and Legos are maybe a good starting point. But also experimentation, in the sense of fun and games, is really important. Because when it comes to AR, somebody was mentioning we're just at the tip of the iceberg, and that's absolutely correct. AR, what it is today, will be so different than what it will be 10 years from now. And so trying out ideas, having fun and exploring things that might seem crazy but may actually end up being a whole new way of doing something. It's, it's really important. Yeah. So um, from my perspective covering the lifestyle tech space, we're starting to see how AR can help me try on a lipstick color without actually being in Sephora or visioning how a piece of furniture is going to look in my living room without actually purchasing it. All these really interesting and awesome use cases. Um, but they're mostly right now through the mobile phone. So right. um, is AR ever going to leave the mobile phone? Is there new interfaces to explore? Maybe you could talk about your work with mirrors um, in, in different beauty uh, facilities. <laughs> yeah. So. Most people believe that headsets will eventually change and, and take over mobile phones, and that could happen. But headsets are great for a number of applications, but there are some applications, especially related to the face, where having a headset on your face just doesn't make sense. So there's a different way of having AR, which is having a mirror. So you look into a mirror and your reflection is you plus some changes. And in, in our space, that really makes sense. So we've been working with L'Oreal, Estee Lauder, and Sephora in putting in-store mirrors that simulate makeup or hair color or different beauty products. And people love using them. There is, there is no friction, there is no barrier. They just walk up to a mirror and look at their reflection. And so any plans for Mati Face to enter the mixed reality space or smart glasses space? We've been hearing a lot about that lately. Not, I mean, we're interested in that space, but we are still a fairly small company if you compare us to, for example, the Facebooks and Googles of the world. So we have to pick our battles carefully. Um, so not immediate plans, but it is an, it's a very interesting space once a 
enough people have smart glasses. And there are a number of things that could be done, but for us, it's more of a wait and see approach right now. Yeah, and for folks who aren't familiar, could you talk about some of the projects that you've worked on specifically? I know you did something recently with Estee Lauder mm -hmm. and a chatbot. Yes. You also have worked with Smashbox, one of my favorite beauty brands recently, to do actually something in eye tracking. So it's not, you know, you hear Mati Face, you think augmented reality, but you're actually touching on a lot of things right now. There's artificial intelligence in there, there's the chatbots, as I mentioned, um, and uh, the, the eye tracking as well. So if you could talk about those specific projects and how you've um, really helped these brands from a business perspective perspective using augmented reality? So our focus is augmented reality in the beauty space, but we are a business to, to make money. And, and ultimately, our success is measured by increase in sales for brands. So it's, it's fun, it's engaging, but ultimately, we live or die by how much conversions um, Smashbox and Estee Lauder and other brands get. So what um, motivates us is every day thinking about where we are and where we could be, what could be done better. What we've done, for example, is, is looking at AR and seeing that there are places that it really makes sense. A chatbot, for example, is, is a great place that you simply send a photo in or send a video and you see your uh, video or photo back with a product. Really high engagement in, in, in a chatbot platform. And we've also seen um, technologies that could really make an impact. For example, if you're using a Snapchat filter or if you're using one of our applications, knowing where you're looking at on screen, it is very valuable information. If you're looking at an ad, or if you're looking at a product, or if you're looking not at the product or the ad, that information can really help make a sale or not make a sale. So we've been working on eye tracking from a mobile phone and using it to essentially guide and, and understand the user's intent. And we piloted that with Smashbox. We saw that if you track where someone is looking at on screen and help them, guide them into suggesting products that they are actually spending more time looking at, you actually increase sales by 27%. Wow. So is this something that you, what, what was the form factor for Smashbox? Was it an app that you created for them? It's an app. It's on their website. Um, so, so many different places. We, we're really platform agnostic. Right. But uh, right now, mainly app and web. I'm really excited to try it. I haven't gotten around to it yet, but I'm really excited. And so um, we know that Facebook recently has announced their <laughs> AR Studio. Yeah. This is a developer platform for creating masks and advanced effects uh, and animations. Any plans for Maudie Face to get into this space? We do. So leveraging Facebook um, uh, uh, Studio. So absolutely. Uh, one of the things that we can provide is the ability to match the shades and make sure the rendering of the products are correct. But again, not really knowing what platforms are going to be most popular and being platform agnostic has been really helpful for us in the past and will continue to support every platform, ARKit and, and Facebook as well. Do you think that AR is going to become the kind of standard for the beauty industry? We're seeing so many beauty companies get involved. So if I walk into a beauty counter in five years and they don't have augmented reality, I'll be shocked. Absolutely. I think it is happening now. At the top level, most brands have made a decision to roll out AR everywhere. It's just a matter of time before it actually is fully done on a global basis. But it already started, the ball started to roll in that direction. And what are the biggest challenges right now for the space? So the big challenge we had was really convincing brands a few years ago that it actually does increase sales. It's a big commitment. Putting iPads in stores or mirrors in stores, it, there is a cost when you do it at 10,000 locations. But we're over that challenge. Now it's just how fast and how can one brand be different than a different brand? Because every brand wants to be unique. So that unique, uniqueness factor is still, um, I think, the main challenge. Yeah, very interesting. And so what's next for Mati Face? So for us, it's just digging in, in, in more deeper technologies related to AR. One of the things that really interests us is that people think of AR as, as a fun application, and it is, and people spend a lot of time. But they also, through that time that they spend, we collect significant data. We know someone's face shape, eye shape. We know what products they've tried on. We know what they're actually looking at on screen. Connecting those dots can be extremely helpful in understanding each shopper, even in stores. And so that's a really next a big direction for us. Great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you.